Hi guys, Max here, and as you can see, it was an absolute bloodbath yesterday. Stocks crashed across the board. Almost every stock that you can think of actually fell. Pick one out of a hat and I'd pay you $100 if it didn't fall. The only ones that I can really think of that didn't were um, McDonald's, which rose very slightly. Everywhere else, as you can see, Tesla down by 7%, Amazon down by 5%, Google down by 4%, Microsoft and Apple down by that same 4% mark. In the energy sector, it was much the same. Most oil companies down by 4, 5, 6, even 7%, some of them. It was the same in financials with everything falling. The same in healthcare, consumer cyclicals and defensives, industrials and real estate. Literally everything fell for the day. The S&P 500 then fell by about 3.9% for the day. One of the worst daily performances we've had in this bear market so far. Now, as I say that word bear market, no longer can people complain at me because we are now officially, according to their weird definition, in a bear market. The S&P 500 is down by 22% year to date so far, so it's over that threshold. The Nasdaq is, of course, doing even worse, as you would expect when you see these mega big tech companies falling by 7% in a day. The Nasdaq fell by 4.6% yesterday alone, and it's now down by 32% year to date. Basically, we saw brand new lows of this bear market yesterday. Everything fell and nothing was happy. The Dow Jones did slightly better, only falling by 2.8%, but the Russell 2000 actually underperformed, falling by 4.7%, which is a massive drop as well. And that's really bad news because as I've mentioned so many times before, the Russell 2000 makes up most of the companies which actually have the best indication of how the American economy is going to perform because they're mostly not international. Was it at least better in the rest of the world then? Well, no, as you can see, it was red everywhere over in Asia, in Europe, and then in the rest of the Americas as well. The FTSE 100 was down by 1.5% with the stock 600 falling by 2.4%. The MSCI World Index then fell by 3.7% for the day, an absolute bloodbath as you can see. There's hardly any green there, and frankly, this isn't too surprising. What happened in the world of currencies then? Well, what might be surprising if you haven't been following this channel, but if you have, it shouldn't be surprising, is the fact that the dollar rose on this news by about 1.1%. Now, the reason we've been seeing that so frequently is basically because, yes, the dollar is weak. Yes, inflation is really damn high. But compared to every other currency in the world, it's still strong. It's still the world reserve currency, despite what a lot of people might want it to be. And so actually, when you see markets route like this, People leave other currencies like the euro and the pound and they route back into the US dollar. The euro fell by about 1% then and sits at $1.04, getting damn close to parity. And the pound fell by about 1.5% as well and now sits at $1.21, again, continuing that decline. Now, in the bond market, we had a really crazy day with bond yields rising a ridiculous amount for one day. The US 10-year treasury yield rose by 22 basis points across the course of one day. That is incredible volatility and that should be very worrying. Now, it was also relatively volatile in the rest of the world, but not by as quite as much. In Germany, their 10-year yield rose by about 12 basis points, and uh, the British 10-year yield rose by 8 basis points as well. The US 10-year Treasury yield, I forgot to mention, is now sitting at 3.37%, way above that 3% mark that it's been hovering around for a couple of weeks now. Now, the markets are now pricing in a terminal federal funds rate near 4%, which basically means they expect the Federal Reserve to hike interest rates until they sit at 4%, which is a hell of a lot higher than we are right now. That means there are probably going to be major rate hikes into the future. And this comes down to the idea that the market and investors in particular basically believe that the Fed has no choice anymore. Inflation is so ridiculously high, it has to be brought down. And the only way to do that is to destroy demand. Now, I mentioned earlier that actually energy companies routed across the board. So does that mean that oil prices fell? Do we at least have that as some good news? Well, unfortunately not. Uh, WTI crude oil has stayed pretty much the same compared to where it was last week. It's still at $121 a barrel and Brent crude is still just a touch higher at $123. So there's no good news there, I'm afraid. In the world of gold, something that should be an inflation hedge or at least some kind of hedge against market turmoil, well, it isn't doing well either. Gold prices fell by almost 3% yesterday alone, and it's now sitting at $1,824 an ounce, which is not at all nice to see. 
Now, there's been a lot said about the crypto markets recently, and for good reason, they have been crashing all over. But how did they do yesterday in particular? Well, not brilliantly, but okay, especially when you compare it to how they performed over the weekend. Um, Bitcoin was down by about 6% over the last day alone. Ethereum down by about 3%. Actually, quite a lot of altcoins rose for the day, but it is worth noting that these are 10% rises after falling 30 or 40%. So really, this can't actually be considered much good news. Now, why is crypto collapsing? Well, the first big thing is this Celsius drama, which we discussed yesterday on this channel. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. Basically, Celsius is one of the biggest decentralized finance cryptocurrency companies in the world, and it looks like it's about to go insolvent. They are blocking people from taking out their money or their funds. This is not good news at all for those investors. It's not good news for Celsius, and so it's bad news for the rest of the market as well. We also then got some news from Binance, another absolutely massive and probably the biggest crypto company in the world, which has started to halt Bitcoin withdrawals for technical reasons. Now, what that actually means, I don't know. They claim it's some kind of backlog, but it is interesting how there never seems to be any technical reasons for uh, blocking withdrawals when the markets are going up. But when they crash, these sort of things happen all the time. Maybe Binance is struggling with a few things, maybe with their balance sheet, we don't really know, but that isn't good news either. Now, there's a lot of fear around the crypto markets still right now. $22,000 for Bitcoin is ridiculously low. It's very close to the previous highs of the 2018 or 17 bull market. And that's worrying to a lot of people because there's been this idea going around that's pushed by a lot of very big YouTubers. Um, one I can think of in particular is Andre Jick, who makes really high quality videos, but he's parroted this idea in the past that Bitcoin never goes below its previous cycle high. So last cycle, it rose to a $19,000 absolute high. So it will never go below that again. That's a really naive idea to believe. It has no basis in reality. And it's using just 10 years of historical precedent to try and make such a uh, authoritative claim. It doesn't make any sense. Please don't trust that kind of thing. Don't trust anyone who says that kind of thing. It is absolutely possible for Bitcoin to go way below that previous high. But this does mean that a lot of those people are starting to worry about their predictions being wrong. Now, I also mentioned in my video uh, talking about Celsius and the crypto market yesterday, I mentioned uh, a couple of stable coins, in particular this one, USDD. And in short, they haven't regained their pegs. They're still looking uh, very unhealthy. As you can see from this, it should be around this level here, around a dollar. It isn't there. It dropped off and then it dropped off again yesterday. This is bad news as well, especially considering the fact that this hasn't solved itself. And most of these algorithmic stable coins suffer from identical problems to that of UST and Luna. And they're going in that exact same direction. So please stay away from these algorithmic stable coins in particular. They are incredibly risky. Now, just why were the markets so ridiculously awful then? Well, it stems from Friday's US CPI data, which came in at 8.6%. Investors are still terribly worried about that. Um, there wasn't trading done over the weekend for traditional finance because there never is. So markets were very volatile come Monday, trying to price all this brand new news. There is now a near certainty that the Federal Reserve is going to hike interest rates very high, and that's very worrying. There's now a wide held belief that they're going to hike by 75 basis points this week. We don't know if that's actually true or not. We don't know if they will go that far, but there's a high probability at this point. We also got US producer prices in, and again, there's a rise there. That's also bad for inflation. It's also representative of rising prices all over the place. So that's not good for markets. We have the absolute mega fears surrounding a recession, which I've obviously been calling for for about six months now, ever since the start of this year. And things aren't looking that good there either. Consumer confidence is at the lowest level in the United States that it has ever been recorded literally ever consumers have never been so pessimistic about the markets or the environment their job market things like that before and that's really bad because when consumers are scared they spend less money they save more money which might be good on an individual level but that grinds the economy to the halt and that causes demand destruction which is actually what markets are almost hoping for right now to bring inflation down then, of course, we have the crypto crash, which has caused billions of dollars of losses. The crypto market is now worth less than $1 trillion for the first time in, I think, almost three years. That's not good for investors. That's not good for all of these people who made their money on the crypto markets and suddenly found out that they have no money left.
In short, all of the fears that we've been talking about over the last six months have finally come to a head. They're all hitting investors, smacking them about, and investors just don't know what to do. They're routing from the uh, equity market, they're routing from the crypto market, and they're routing from the bond market as well. There is nowhere that's safe. No one knows where to keep their money and everyone's terribly worried. Finally, then the last thing we're going to talk about today is that actually we got a uh, UK GDP figures for the last month. We actually get figures out every month, which is quite useful. And we saw that the UK GDP, the size of our economy, actually fell last month by about 0.3% when we were expecting it to rise by about 0.1%. This is just another sign of a recession coming. Uh, a lot of people are trying to draw this to Brexit and things like that. Frankly, there's no basis in this. Um, France's GDP fell over the last quarter. The US's GDP fell over the last quarter as well. You will know this, but this is the start of a recession. Every major economy in the world is going to be seeing a tightening of their belts. Things are going to be getting hard. People are going to be losing money and their jobs, and the economies are going to fall because of it. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to bless the YouTube algorithm. It really does help. If you want to join our exclusive community, then check out our Patreon. You get access to our Discord server and extra content like access to my portfolio and buy and sell alerts for all my own investments. Also, make sure to check out the link in the description to Masterworks. It can help you protect your portfolio against market turmoil through fractional shares of art from world-famous artists. Art has historically proven to be uncorrelated to the markets, so it's a really valuable resource with the markets falling every week. There's also a link in the description to iTrust Capital, which helps you to invest in crypto through your tax-advantaged IRA, which could literally save you thousands. If you, like me, think crypto going down is a buy-in opportunity, then now is the perfect time to join iTrust Capital. Thank you all for watching. Stay stoic. Until next time.